Hey, this is Jared Rikakazak Bartlett bringing you my sample coaching video. Today, real quickly before we get into the two sample hands I have chosen for us, I wanted to talk about the best ways to contact me either for questions or for setting up times for lessons. The best method is going to be either a PM on 2 plus 2, a PM on Lego Poker, or Skype. Now for all three sites, my screen name is Rikakazak, so it's the same way that you'll see when I make this post on 2 plus 2. Now I am dedicated to giving you guys really good customer service, the best customer service I can provide. And so that means every single day I check my 2 plus 2 PMs and every single day I check my Lego Poker PMs. Now unfortunately I do have a real estate business and I can't check Skype every single day. The big reason for that is a lot of times I use my mobile device for checking PMs and it just doesn't have access to Skype but I am on Skype four to five days a week. So I am on there very often to answer you guys questions and anything like that. Now with that out of the way, we're gonna go over two sample hands. I think they demonstrate my skill level, what to expect from me as a coach. However, they were in two Lego videos that I had before and I did have to kind of uh, edit them <laughs> together so unfortunately my editing skills isn't, isn't the greatest so if you can bear through the editing uh, I think you'll really enjoy these two hands so enjoy to set up this hand that I've got on the screen I need to quickly say what happened in the video on November 29th if, I'm assuming even if you have watched it you probably forgot the specific hand or whatever but basically emptiness and asked me a question and another gentleman asked me a question via PM about it and so I thought I'd kind of explain it a little bit better but basically what happened is someone raised from early position I called with a pocket pair I flop a set on a pretty dry board he bets flop I call he bets turn I call he bets river and I shove and he called with a pretty marginal hand and the theme of the question was wow you know do you always slow play your sets like that and my answer was not always <clears throat> now I hate I absolutely hate giving the generic res answer to you guys of well sometimes I do this sometimes I do that because that, that's not really helpful if you're trying to improve your play you need to know why do I do you know why sometimes do I slow play to the river why some play sometimes do I raise the turn and why sometimes do I raise the flop so we're gonna really work look at that why so when you're put in the situation you can ask yourself those why questions and you can determine you know the best line for you so uh, <clears throat> real quick uh, pier 76 on and candy caddy man is the small blind and big blind but f unfortunately for some reason when I do the replayer and I put the recording software on it just the small blind and big blind disappear but that's where it is so doctor is raising from under the gun now this hand is a little bit different in the fact that I didn't flop a set but realistically even if I did flop a set let's say I did have a set of sevens or a set of threes I played exactly the same way and as you can guess I do turn a set of tens <coughs> so his c-bet obviously calling it's only half pot he could have a hand like ace queen he could have pocket eights he could have seven eight suited he is a 13 nine so he's a little bit tighter so he's not gonna have seven eight suited too often but obviously doing anything but calling I think is weak <coughs> we're obviously not folding around the turn so I turn my set of tens and he goes ahead and donks the turn now in the previous video I called turn he bet river and I shove in this spot I change what I did I contradict myself and I raise the turn now here's the differences in that hand in the first hand me and the gentleman had very little history we hadn't played a ton we played some but we hadn't played I would say you know tons of hands he doesn't know me into you know we don't have tons of history whereas me and doctor have played tons of poker for several maybe not several years but at least a year I you know I recognize the name and I have a feeling he probably recognizes my name too so we played a ton of poker before <coughs> now in this example I know that the doctor knows that I'm capable of turning a made hand into a bluff so my race here on the turn isn't just draws and sets <coughs> it's also turning pocket sixes into a bluff on this turn turning pocket eights into a bluff on this turn I'm perfectly capable he knows I can do that you know and it's one of those 
he knows I can do it, I know he knows I can do it kind of leveling. So this is sort of a balancing act. Now the reason why I decided to raise the turn is I did think he was capable of 3-bet just shoving Ace-Queen of Hearts on this turn. Whereas in the previous, you know, the hand that was in the video on November 29th, we didn't have that history, we didn't have that sort of dynamic, and so I didn't think he would necessarily... Generally, what, what what I call it is, let's say he did have a weak over pair or a weak top pair type hand in the November 29th video. I thought my opponent would click the time bank, think on the turn, if I would have raised the turn, thought, 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 taken a note, time down, and folded. It. It's kind of one of those, he'd give me credit the first time. So the first time I did it, I'd prefer if it was a bluff against him, whereas the doctor and this hand knows I'm capable of turning eights into a bluff, knows I'm capable of turning, say, seven, eight of hearts into a bluff, or things like that. So the flip side of this is now I can balance by actually having a set sometimes. And as, a, as we know in poker, you know, it's difficult to flop a set, so he knows I'm not going to have a set here too often, but yeah. And this is also a good line that if I want more value range, meaning if I truly think the doctor is capable of shoving ace queen of hearts here, which I did, I'll actually slow play my ace king or my pocket aces on this flop, and it adds a lot more value into my range. So I go ahead and I <coughs> raise, and we do get the three bet, which is fantastic for us. And he had a hand like he did have ace jack of diamonds so as you can tell most people without history when he bets this turn with ace jack of diamonds we raised they just call because they want to see you know do I hit my queen do I hit my diamonds I can get paid off yada 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 and also they don't think that much fold equity let's be honest most people view a turn raise as very strong so they don't three bet shove draws so I think my read was right. I do think he's going to shove ace jack of hearts here sometimes, ace queen of hearts sometimes. So I think it was really profitable for us. And you get lucky he doesn't hit. Get in the video. If you've never seen a review video of mine real quick, for some reason the recording software does not pick up the blinds when I play them back in Hold'em Manager. So run you over is the small blind, and I am the big blind. And this is a NL200 rush table. It says on the top left-hand corner, but I'm not sure... If It'll come across. So run you over who's a 15-12 with a 41% steal opens. He's got a 59% fold to 3-bet, so I could 3-bet king-queen off for value. You know, he might call my 3-bet out of position with hands like king-jack, queen-jack, but this time I just decided to flatten. I think that's perfectly fine. He goes ahead and checks. Um, a lot... Here's the thing. When he checks... I think that actually really defines his range. And the reason for that is, if he had air, let's say he has jack-10 of diamonds, so he completely missed this flop, he's going to c-bet. It's an ace-high flop. It's a fantastic flop to c-bet. And his c-bet is 72%. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it, you know, and that's decently high. So he likes to c-bet. He recognizes this is a great board to c-bet. And if he doesn't have anything, he's going to c-bet because the ace-high is great. But... When he checks, I think he's checking to pot control. Now, once in a while, he's going to have a set of sixes and he's going for a check raise. But the vast majority of the time, in my opinion, he's got a hand like ace two of diamonds, pocket tens. He's got a hand that he really wants to get to showdown, doesn't necessarily want to blow the pot out of position. Now, when he checks, I expect him to always call. So I'm not betting this flop. Well, He's either going to call my flop bet, L let me put percentages on it. I would say 70% of the time he's going to check call my flop bet, 20% of the time he's going to check raise my flop bet, and 10% of the time he's just going to check fold, in which case maybe he just didn't want to get in a blind versus blind war, or maybe he's tilting and just wants to say, screw it, I don't want to play Rick and Kazak out of position, or whatever the case may be. So the vast majority of the time he is going to check call. Now I make this bet not for the, ter the flop bet, because... I gotta be honest, I don't think the flop bet's positive EV. It's to set up the turn bet. Now when he check calls, if he had a set, let's say he had a set of sixes, he's going to check raise that flop. It's just too wet, the flop hits my range, and he's just not gonna check call with a set or two pair, you know, a seven, a six, very often, if at all. 
because it's such a wet board. If this was an Ace-8-2 rainbow flop, you know, we're, that's different than an Ace-7-6 with a flush draw and a backdoor flush draw type flop. So when he check calls, I really think he's got a hand like pocket tens, Ace-2 a diamond, something like that. So he checks to me on the turn, and I decide to make what I call a 2x turn bet. And it doesn't come off in the video because Hold'em Manager doesn't take away the rake, but on full tilt they do. The turn pot was actually like $26.33, you know, something right around around those lines. So I intentionally bet 2x pot. The reason why is if I would bet something funny, let's say it's a $26 pot and I bet $44. He might think that was he might think that I did that as a misclick. You know, I, I meant to bet twenty four dollars and I bet forty four or, or whatever he might think. But when I intentionally put exactly two times the pot in, I believe he's a smart enough player to realize that I, I, I wanted to bet two times the pot. Now when he's got a weak hand, he's out of position, and I could have anything from two pair, a set I could have something like 4-5 of hearts where I've got tons of outs. Even if he's got ace-2 of diamonds, he's got to face tons of outs out of position. You know, he has to face tons of outs and be out of position. Also, I could bluff the river. I could just shove the river. I mean, it's setting up stacks perfectly for a river shove. I could also have him beat. He just basically has no idea where he stands, what to do. I mean, if he wanted to play a big pot he would have bet the flop. The whole reason why he check called the flop was to manage the pot size out of position. I basically identified what my opponent wanted, which was to play a small pot, and I did the opposite of it. And by betting the 2x, it shows I'm intentional and it wasn't a misclick, and so I absolutely love this play. And in the hand, he folded the turn.